Cheshire Incorporated. Voices are all around again. Wandering words flicker like fire, dimly lighting the vacuous cavity of my vanishing ego. What was once my sanity now belongs to someone far away. The city holds me like an enormous phosphorescent cell inside a reeking roach hotel. I slink, eyes on feet, through the menagerie of monsters, the indigent, indigenous whores and pimps, with spiny fins piercing fur coats, green gills from self-celebratory cigar sucking, thick eyebrows, shroud green jewels. They tuck themselves away from the world in subocular alcoves, invisible but to the depraved. They beckon me, and I examine them, my eyes swaying on cybernetic bug stalks, observing coolly, cataloging. Their lips peel back in hideous smiles to reveal soggy yellow canines jabbing at random from pink wet gums. They stare uninterestedly at me and, snorting forth a nicotine callus in slow motion, turn away. They have insectile eyelids all, cardinal lips and fat fur coats, short sequined saffron skirts, dark hose, high heels. This city is asylum for lost lambs and wild wolves is one. Where are the doctors in this madhouse? I see only the sick at Scuttle, alike ants toting bags, pistols, promises, and insipid puns. The sick leading the sick. Blind rats in an ever-spreading circle. I can feel leprosy ripening in my rotten joints, growing like bread mold in deep green clumps. I'm sore whenever walking on these sordid fortune cookie legs. In their barometric arthritis, I can feel the man out there. The man who keeps my mind in a little wooden box locked with a rusty golden hinge. He's tall, in a collar-up trench coat like a detective. He wears a raggy hat and raggy pants, and he is like a living pile of rags. His hair is long and raggy, his arms are stiff, his hands crackled with old age like leather, thin fingers long. He shrugs, folding in his whispering arms like a sleeping moth, skin gray and fuzzy. He lights a draw and then a spark catches his face in a dim glow. Melting gray skin like bark, broken yellow teeth clamping the poison behind them a black tongue. His nose turned up like a hollow corpse's two gloomy caverns and a marrow bar between them he wipes that with his ragged sleeve his eyes are smoothed flat over like beach sand scar tissue pale and delicate drifts over his sly eye sockets his ears have bona fide into mounds with a funnel like hole in the center of each both indian cemeteries he cracks a positively hideous smile Cigarette dangling limply from one lip and coiling up tendrils of smoke. He runs a long fingernailed finger over the box my spirit is in. His bulbous chapped lips undulate, sloughing off words in a soothing lover's tone. So peaceful, yet menacing with intent. He beckons me out into the city night. Neon scars run all around me, bloody scabs of Broadway. The romance as the two eminent movie stars slither in to christen a new movie awakening in public cocoons. I'm sweating under a navy winter coat across the summer shower wet street. Cars swish by between us, but I'm right behind them. The fat woman feels the psychic breeze of closeness. She looks around trancedly at the attendants who applaud and beg an autograph off her. She smiles nervously. I crack a truly hideous smile and grope my skin gun through my pocket. I know she could be mine. The leather eye patch rubs against my one sealed over eye. 
My lips stick together and I sniff whole Cheetos raw for sustenance. I light a ragged cigarette. I pay a penny to peep show two girls performing sex acts on each other. I sit there and melt my clothes into a sick pile on the floor watching them undulate. The two sisters are reflected in the surface of the blob. My skin is a tight gray fuzzy scar tissue all over. One girl sees me accidentally and screams. The other looks over and wretches. My body hairs have grown to the straight-backed wooden chair like moss. My blackened tongue lolls out and to the side. I am a greenish gray. My body is beginning to segment like a spider's. I chase the Puerto Rican girl through a southern mansion in her mind. Outside are Civil War battle sounds and slaves churning butter. Finally, I trap the naked girl in a study full of animal heads and pull my piece. Everything, every real thing, that is, has a counterpart in the astral sphere. I fill her with globs of milky fructose. Millions of immature, miniature replicas of me immediately sprout from the globs. She screams. In reality, she just drools. I get back on the trail of my actress. You see, I can see in her cunt-filled mind that she knows the man I seek. By tomorrow, that dancing lesbian hussy will be my agent and can help me follow the man through his ghetto fronts to find the real him. I hear his voice in my head, low and slow like a memory resurging, disrupting synapses. I see his eyeless smile. I know he is only an agent for something larger, larger than I know. Why he wants my soul? Am I to be an agent for him? I can see his eyeless smile, cracked, seeping gums cling weakly to stale corn-like teeth, gripping a green tentacle of a cigarette. His name is Sam.